Jim, let's talk some AEW news. Once CM Punk debuted Saturday night at the Survivor Series, naturally Tony Khan was inundated on Twitter by, I guess you could say, pro CM Pong, CM Pong, <laughs> pro CM Punk uh, fans, people who aren't fans, but a lot, seemingly overwhelmingly a lot of fans that did like him when Tony posted about the football game. It was all comments in reply about CM Punk. Monday night, Brian Danielson put out a tweet, 6.51 p.m., again, the night that CM Punk debuts on Raw, my dad always told me, the right thing is often the hardest thing to do. It won't always make the most money. It won't always be the most popular. But it's still the right thing to do. Hashtag AEW with a heart emoji, uh, followed by hashtag bankruptcy based on that advice. But uh, that was the uh, tweet from Brian Danielson, and it was vague enough that people. Cryptic, cryptic even. That's right. Any thoughts on the initial tweet here? Well, you're you're setting up the timeline of events here like a master prosecutor, Brian. Last you should have been you should have finished that pre-law background you had. You and Dutch Mantel understand we're in the same class. The timeline was on Saturday night, CM Punk returns to the Survivor Series and breaks the internet in front of 18,000 people or whatever the fuck it was at the sold out show, and everybody's going crazy. Meanwhile, Tony has three hours of television on a network he's trying to do a a renewal on the rights fees with that I don't know, and we'll talk about that here at some point in the program. Did they crack 300,000 viewers this week? And he tweets about an unrelated issue, another part of his sports empire, and people bombard his image of bam, 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 bam with fuck you about punk and why couldn't punk be for you instead of blah, blah, blah. So the following day, Brian Danielson emits that very cryptic tweet, but Brian Danielson is one of the most universally beloved figures by the fans. He's such a nice guy, and they've been in his corner, the yes movement. So that tweet happens. People are kind of like, hmm? And then the news suddenly appears the following morning, I guess, wasn't it? it? It's it's leaked, or did it drip, or did it... Was the garden hose spigot turned on and it just kind of came out on purpose? That Brian Danielson... Correct me if I'm saying this incorrectly. Brian Danielson was the head of the disciplinary committee that we heard about, but never knew who was on it, that led to the firing of CM Punk or the recommendation of that to Tony Khan for same? Is that what we're what we learned the following morning after Brian admitted his little word puzzle? Right. The chain of events were that Tony Khan started getting a lot of flack online from people about what happened with CM Punk. Then all of a sudden this tweet, then a story emerges. Fightful broke the news that the disciplinary committee in AEW was a three-person committee with an internal lawyer, Chris Peck, an external lawyer who's undefined, but I'd like to know if he works for the Khan family in any other fashion. That'd be one of the questions about the impartial third party. And a wrestler from the roster, and Brian Danielson was the pick. And this three-person committee so that Tony Khan didn't have to make any decisions on his own, came up with the decision, or came to the decision, that CM Punk should be fired. I guess fired with cause is the way it was put. Brian Danielson, of course, here's something from Fightful, I'll read it. Danielson was said to have spoken to the roster when addressing them about Punk's termination, and noted that the decision was a particularly hard one. He cited the positives that CM Punk brought and his long-standing friendship with Punk, but said that it was a decision that had to be made. So, CM Punk's leaving AEW is now 
fairly or unfairly, <laughs> and I think a lot of it's really unfairly the way this got out, being put on Brian Danielson. Well, no, I, th- I think basically Tony probably, because Tony has already announced that Pockets may be his like adopted delinquent son, but Brian Danielson is the, I don't know, is he a big brother figure now? He's the guy, if anything happens to me, folks, I'm going to leave this in the hands of Brian Danielson. So did did Brian Danielson, when Tony tweeted his his big brother and said, oh, they hate me. They hate me. They hate me because I fired him, but he yelled at me. And what else was I supposed to do? Brian said, Tony, I'll take the heat for this. It was my decision because after all, you put me on the committee of me and your other lawyers so that you wouldn't have to make a decision. And we made a decision purely based on the facts of the matter and not based on business or logic, but based on who you like and who I like and the fact that I like having a guaranteed seven-figure job for life here with you as long as you last. There wasn't it at all. It was purely independent. So I'll take the heat, kind of. And he tweeted that, and then they didn't really get it. So then they had to leak it a little bit more, but it's to take the heat off of Tony because Brian knows the fans that like him are going to like him, and that way he doesn't have to listen to Tony crown his shoulder at 3 o'clock in the morning when Tony should be up booking fucking horizontal fucking graphs and vertical graphs for his next tournament. That's what I think. I think Brian volunteered. Let me handle this, boss. I can take care of it. If Don't you, you it's got it's to get the heat off Tony. Well, absolutely. For being a, a dickless putz and not making a decision about his own company and handed it off to other people. Who would make the decision that the other friends of everybody wanted Tony to make? So it, it, it we got there in the same place, but Tony didn't have to goddamn take any heat. Now he's taking heat, so he wants to get it off of him. And now Danielson's going to take heat. And going forward, too, when people realize the input of Brian Danielson and his buddy Jimmy Jacobs on this show, they're going to really have to judge, based on where this show goes, really how big of a how can this was. How can Danielson have been the best thing about the show three years ago and now have become like the... The pacifist. In can, I, can I tell fucking... you why? Because Brian Danielson is one of the most talented wrestlers of this generation, if not many generations. And you could put him in there and he could have an amazing emotional match that you could lose yourself in. Sometimes I think he does too many of the same things over and over, but by and large, really can't complain at all about So Brian do Danielson. many of the greats. So, so, so did everyone. Flair did, and I loved it. So... It's just the way it is. I don't know if I would take that wrestler whose in-ring work I admire so much and say I want him to be in charge of any aspect of my business. There's a difference between the creative end, specifically the in-ring creative, because I also don't know if I would want that amazing in-ring technician to have anything to do with my booking as talented as he is, he may not understand how booking works. And that, every, <laughs> and that everybody else can't keep up with him in the ring and that maybe that, uh, you know, you need a little a different skill set for the writing than you do the starring of the movie. Or let me, well, are you saying that Babe Ruth would not have made the best owner of the Yankees? A, a fine, upstanding, sober citizen like Babe Ruth that would have been business-minded and and just made him a fortune if he was in charge of the front office. I won't even say the owner, but that's actually a very interesting example you just gave because of what really happened. Babe Ruth was under the impression when he retired from baseball that the Yankees were going to bring him into the organization, that he would have something to do. He wanted to manage the team. He still wanted to go on the road with the team, be a part of it, be Babe Ruth. He never got that chance. He thought he was promised that chance. Caused some problems, obviously some heartache for him, 
Whether or not he would have been a good manager, I don't know. He would have been an awful owner. But we're talking about management. We're talking about, and managing a ball club is different than formatting a show for national television. Which they apparently have not mastered the art of yet. But nevertheless, back to the topic at hand. So what was the topic at hand? Well, Danielson's role here, the story getting out. What are your thoughts in general on the disciplinary committee being three people and these three people, uh, in-house lawyer Chris Peck, wrestler Brian Danielson, and mystery lawyer number three from an outside, impartial law firm, allegedly? It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of to begin with, and Part of the reason why that the AEW fans have bought this whole thing about that, the you know, the legal, I can't comment because of legal and the disciplinary committee and the legal independent investigation is because this is shit that they actually do for real in various businesses. You hear about it all the time. <laughs> this shit does get done for real in other lines of work, but not in a fucking wrestling business. You fucking morons. It doesn't happen. It didn't happen here. Not anything legitimate. And it can't happen. Because it, your goddamn Tony Khan, whether he's the booker or Triple H, if you want to call him the booker, there's a staff of writers, but the goddamn director of the movie, the director of the movie and or the studio are the ones who decide what the fuck is going to happen. And even then now, it's not, it's not the way it was back in the days of Jack Warner. But I guarantee God damn to you that there has never been a case in the WWE where Vince McMahon wasn't the person to personally not only hear both sides of the goddamn talent's argument and or delegate it to Jim Ross, but then Vince would hear about it, hear both sides of the goddamn argument and then make the decision of which one was more valuable. And that would be the end, and then that other person would find out. And that'd be the end of that. There's a disciplinary committee for the fucking boy. Yeah, they investigate Vince because he's worth $5 billion or whatever the fuck. But you don't investigate goddamn wrestlers. You get to the goddamn meat of the matter of what the fucking problem was. You ascertain as best you can whose fault it was as far as who instigated this shit or who should have known better, you figure out which one is more valuable to you. And if they can't possibly live together, generally you get rid of the one that's not valuable and keep the one that is, or elsewise just tell them both, quit your goddamn bitching and stay away from each other or I'll fire one or both of you. It shouldn't be that difficult and it doesn't take that long. But nobody wanted to do that here. And now, again, Tony don't want the fans mad at him. So Danielson's offering to take the bullet because he's a lot more bulletproof than Tony, who already looks like a fucking imbecile to a lot of people to begin with these days. But it's bullshit. It's all bullshit. According to Fightful, Danielson remains on the committee and he's responsible for The issuing... committee for what? He's responsible for issuing fines when those arise. For what? When, when is the last time they fined somebody or disciplined anybody? Except, do they find people with, hey, you broke my fucking star's leg by jumping off the top rope on his fucking leg. Jungle Boy. What about I'm Jungle Boy? I'm going to find you. What about Jungle Boy? Did he get fined? He's, he's sitting home getting paid, as far as we know, to not wrestle. He was suspended. Is that something that Tony Khan decided or the disciplinary committee of three decided? <laughs> and who, who, why do they need an ongoing disciplinary committee? Who else is getting disciplined? They did whenever somebody fucks up, they just don't book them. Who were they? Who uh, Andre? Right, punched fucking Sammy, and we just, they just sent him home, sent him a check for six months, so he wouldn't cause trouble. Man, he's so desperate to get fired, and I don't know this for sure, but as soon as Punk debuted, he put up a picture of him and Punk. Like he's all <laughs> he wants to be out of there so bad, <laughs> everyone knows it. He's auditioning for the fucking rival team to the Jacksonville Jaguars just to fuck with Tony even further. Well, we'll see what happens with uh, Brian Danielson and AEW uh, going forward. 
Danielson, the disciplinarian. I never thought I'd see the day. He's such a quiet boy.